I'm here today with Jim Buchan, who is chair of the Kemp Hill Flood Group here in Kemnay. Really delighted that Jim can be with us. He brings with him today a huge body of historical evidence and involvement with the flood group and the flood mitigation pressures that has taken place here. I know, Jim, that looking back at the even the relatively recent history of going back to 78, every time uh, there's been a storm development, um, especially recently building on Storm Frank, of course, of course and the, the bund uh, that exists alongside the River Don, essentially what we're looking at and what I'm asking from you, Jim, is if you can give us some sort of indication in terms of why, and if you agree with me that something needs to be done now because we're in a cycle determined by government and SEPA where a new flood plan or a flood plan needs to be in place to enable money to be focused on making material difference to all the residents that live here in, as well as the natural landscape. Yeah, I think you've summarised things very well there, actually, because uh, we're in that situation where nothing's going to happen realistically here until the necessary legislative, perm legislative permissions are in place. And that can only come once the government has completed a flood study on this river, a comprehensive flood study that takes into account not only what's happening here in Kemney, but also upstream and downstream. Now, for that reason, we've been pushing very hard uh, to get the council to, um, to authorise this, and we believe that we are in a, a cycle at the moment where uh, that, that has been prioritised. But it hasn't happened yet. Now, until it happens, residents here are not going to have confidence that we are going to go into the next cycle with something tangible in place that's going to do something about the problem. And the fix that we are looking for is for this bund uh, to be developed uh, to make it suitable for the future, not just for the, the past, but for the future, and for it to be completed, of course, because there's a big gap, gap in it at the moment that water can simply flow through when the river gets high enough. So, I mean, that's really helpful because my, my understanding is that, and, and this is also built on, on recent experience in terms of the situation and flood mitigation measure, measures in Ballater, is that Part of that cycle is to ensure that action is taken now for the longer term. Um, I know that the, the great temporary uh, flood mitigation measure, the Watergate measure in 2022, um, that can get rolled out as and when, but it's only temporary. What you're looking for now is something longer term, and that's why it's so important that action is taken now in terms of ensuring that there is a motivation forward to address a new flood plan and that means partnership work involving SEPA, the council and the great community group that you're, you're chair of as well as the local residents here as well that need to be part of that input along with the community council. Do you agree with that? Because certainly the, the public meetings that I've attended in Ballata, um, one of the things that was missing was certainly parliamentary activity but also that local information, that local historical expertise, which you bring and your colleagues bring, that needs to be inputted as well. It's all very well having experts sitting away from the, the situation, away from the locality in their armchairs, but you need people that really are switched on locally, like yourself in terms of what's going on here and how it can be remedied. Not just for this area, as I understand it, Jim, but basically, to ensure that the problem isn't just passed to another area. That's, it. that's crucial as well, isn't it? A longer term, broader perspective. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I think we're in that situation at the moment where um, we're in limbo. And that's a big worry for the people that live in this estate. Because until we get out of this limbo uh, phase uh, and begin to see things happen again, then it's going to be uh, worrying for us. Because every time the, the rain starts to fall, People get anxious on this estate. Uh, you know, we keep in touch with each other, we communicate with each other, we inform each other about what's happening upstream, because that's an indication of what, what, it's, what it's going to do down here. Uh, now, that's a reassuring local community initiative. It's got nothing to do with the council. Mm. Uh, that's just the local residents here keeping in touch. But it's really important that the local council does something about this, because only the local council has got the ability to affect uh, the, the problem that we're addressing here. Um, we know that the local council has um, 
is keen to do something, but they'll always hide behind legislations and, and policies that they, they claim are not their doing. That they come from higher up, from either Scottish government or national government, and organisations like SEPA, eh, who ultimately are, are the people who control the instigation of flood studies and have the ability to approve that a slough flood study can uh, have the impact of making a change. Now we have a situation here in uh, Camp Hill Park where we have a flood bund that exists but nobody really knows, it would seem, how it was built. We know roughly when it was built but we don't know that it's actually fit uh, for the purpose that it was in intended. So that's the first thing that we would like to see addressed here. We want to see a fit for purpose bund in place. Because that is about 50 years. Is it it's, 78, well, 1977 or thereabouts, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's way back there, so it's quite a long time. Yeah. But, but the problem is that we have tried really hard to find documentary evidence about the design of this bund and exactly when it was built and who built it, and we can't find any evidence. We've been through the council's own records, we've been to look at microfiches and all of those things, and, and, and sadly we are unable to, to, to really properly document what happened here. So I think it's critical that we get past this stage now and look into the future, uh, put in place uh, a fit for purpose bond here. Now that bond that is in place right now is incomplete. It's got a big gaping gap in it mm. and that gap allows water to flow through. There's no defence. Now that's where Watergate comes in and it's reassuring that we have Watergate in place. Yeah. But of course it's never been tested. Mm. since the, the original flood that started all of this activity. Mm. So it's really important for us uh, to, to know that what's going to be in place next time there's a significant flood is going to be adequate. Mm. Thank you very much, Jim. That's really helpful. Thank you. I'm here in Kemble Park and I'm talking to local resident Helen Chalmers. We've been speaking to the flood group today and Helen was somebody that knows better than anybody else what it's like to actually endure the impact of the flooding that has happened in Kemble Park. So without any ado, can I hand over to Helen and please just tell us a little bit about what happened on that time when your house was affected, please Helen. Well, it was after Christmas, we'd had family at home and they had now gone off. We had the house to ourselves, peace and quiet, busy watching television, and husband had to go to the loo. Um, Which year was this, Helen? 2016, the 7th of January. Yeah. Yep. Um, and heard gurgling sounds in the pipes in the bathroom wondered what that was, so opened the door to the um, river side of the house and found that the, it was, the whole area was flooded. Um, went to the other side of the house where all the carps are parked and found that the water was beginning to come in the house at that stage and it was moving really quickly. So shock, horror and think, right, oh my goodness, we've got to get everything out, the vehicles. We had three vehicles in the driveway. Um, so husband, he you know, went, he used, took the first one away and I thought I'd better warn the neighbours because everybody was busy watching television and nobody was hearing me at the door and no matter how many, how, how long I banged at the doors, nobody was hearing it and suddenly people came alive. So we got our vehicles out and by the time I came back from taking the last vehicle to the top of the road on Bremner Way, as I came back in, the water was up past my knees as I came towards the house. Um, and shock to find that your house is full of water and you're walking through it with the water above your knees, thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to take? How, what are we going to manage? And um, as I say, as we walked, as I walked through the kitchen, it was flat, but it was full of water. But when I moved into the living room, I had to go up a hill because the floorboards had lifted up. The carpet was, top carpet was floating. Um, so it was like, try and gather what I could and come out of the house locked the door as I came out, but we left the, the, the riverside door open. Forgot about it. Um, so we slept 
for the night in the local car park across from the village hall in the motor home that we had. Um, and the next morning when we come back, the house was still flooded. The whole area was still flooded. So it was really um, quite scary for some people, but shocking the fact that this had actually happened to us. Never had anything like that before. Don't know of anybody else who had had that before. Um, so yeah, it was quite a shock. And obviously, thank goodness that, that nobody was, was hurt or, or injured. And I think that there were 40 odd houses that were involved um, that were impacted by that um, back at, at that time. One of the reasons why we've had the discussions with the flood group is obviously to prevent anything like this happening again as best as we can. And we know that how important it is to get cracking on this as soon as possible in terms of the next SEPA government cycle, which is 2025 in terms of getting a flood plan. But Helen, the impact on, I mean, the structures, for those people that don't know, the structures here are wooden, but in terms of house valuation and in terms of the cost of insurance, how does that sit with you? What, what, what's your experience from a, uh, you know, a monetary side, irrespective of the, of the health and safety of residents, financially? What sort of an impact has that had? had huge you? impact, huge impact. Um, being honest, in the year 2015, our insurance for the house and contents was £280 um, per year. And in the I think it was in March when the renewal was due, it came in again, but this time it was 320, which we thought was excellent considering all the work that was being done and the thousands of pounds that, you know, was getting spent on the houses. Um, but that later changed. The following year, it jumped up to over 600 pounds per annum. So it meant spending the time for me doing compare the market and getting it down and each year down a bit more till and last year I had got it back to just 20 pound more than it had been originally and I was back with the same company again um, but ex expenses wise I mean some people don't know to compare the market so they just pay that amount of money huge amount and it's not as if we can protect our houses there's nothing we can do to protect it because there's sandbags. Some people will get sandbags, but no matter where you put the sandbags, the water's going to come in on the other side of it. We would need to have sandbags around the whole building, every, you know, two sides of the uh, cemetery yeah. just hatched. Um, and, so that, that, and that's a reason why the prevention works that are so necessary, that's why they're so important because Temporary mechanisms like that and the, the Watergate and um, temporary mitigation um, uh, procedure, um, that's all temporary. You're, you're looking for something that's much more significant. Um, that's true. And so, and the, the other worry is that, as, as everyone knows, we're in a cost of living crisis at the moment um, and moving towards the end of 2024. One of the things that isn't going to come down, we understand, is going to be insurance and insurance quotes, and that's going to impact on a lot of people. So it's been great hearing, to your lived, hearing from your lived experience, Helen. Mm. And um, I know that you, the work that you do and um, the feedback that you give, um, along with other residents, is really important to this whole process. Nothing beats the evidence of why something should be done than lived experience and thank you for that very much. You're welcome and hopefully we can find some solution for it. Hope so.